Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Christian Brucolari. I'm the SVP of Sales and Customer Success at Quick. I've got Mike Meyer here as the CEO and founder. Um, in this session, we're going to talk about how AI is going to change customer service. And I think when we say AI in this context, we're really talking about the new advancements um, in generative AI, things like ChatGPT. So everyone's seen those recent announcements. Lots of people started using ChatGPT, right? We all think it's a cool tool for personal stuff. I recently you know, got a taco recipe this morning out of it. Now, but people are skeptical that it's going to work in the contact center. And so, Mike, maybe I'll just ask you, like, is that true? Do you Are you skeptical that things like ChatGPT will work in the contact center? Yeah, good question. Um, it's definitely an evolving world. Um, and a lot of people think about like ChatGPT and large language models, Google Bard, all these uh, new generation of AI as like the next generation of internet search. And that's probably really true. Um, but the reality is part of what makes those tools awesome is their ability to read and generate language and understand language. And right. so um, what do we do in customer service a lot of times? We have a lot of use cases in which we need to understand what a customer is saying and we need to be able to formulate a response back to the customer. Now, everybody's heard that like, well, okay, that sounds awesome, but ChatGPT can't answer questions because it was only uh, trained on publicly available information and it can't access account information, stuff like that. And the reality is there are uh, techniques to use the language part of ChatGPT separately from the knowledge part of ChatGPT. So you can mm -hmm. think about it as taking um, a really smart um, person who has no uh, foundational knowledge besides English and injecting that person with some knowledge about a particular answer and saying, write an answer for this particular thing. And so um, that particular phenomenon is super exciting. Um, there are uses for both agent and customer, and we'll talk about some of these in, in a second. Um, but on the customer side, I think what we'll start to see is um, Everybody's familiar with conversational AI and kind of what I would call um, chatbots 1.0, and they were very much decision tree and intent focused. And if the bot understood the intent of the question, then somebody had wired up that intent to a particular answer. And this next generation, um, it's not nearly as uh, kind of hardwired as the prior generation. We're able to actually use the, the LLM to interact with the customer. Um, the LLM could potentially answer, uh, ask the customer to answer um, clarifying questions. Um, the LLM uh, can actually ask questions out of sequence. It can know that it needs a set of things and gracefully ask for additional information. And so there's a whole bunch of reasons why, um, as we think about end users and, and customers interacting with businesses, um, I'm convinced that conversational interfaces are going to be much more prevalent. And those conversational interfaces are going to be far better than previously uh, thought possible. Like sometimes it's just kind of like, is this a human or is this uh, a bot that I'm talking to? And um, I think one of the other thing we'll see is because AI works so well inside of uh, text, um, you'll see more interactions occurring on digital channels. And so that's that's not to say you can't convert text into digital, but the reality is that people's listening span for res complicated responses is not very long. And so it's a lot easier for people to see a picture or to see a table of data, and that stuff happens in digital channels. And so right. um, I, long story short, Christian, I think we're in um, a very exciting time. Somebody on, on the team here recently put it as, we're in the first inning of a nine inning game in a seven game series. Right. And, um, like it's already, it's kind of like, well, this is like game changing. Um, it could go quite a bit further. Well, buckle up. Okay. So that, that kind of covers, you know, the, the big takeaway is we can do a lot more than we could with the previous technology. We're going to be doing that in front of customers. So actually deploying this technology that end customers can engage with. Let's we'll talk a little bit about agents um, because you know, I think most contact center leaders and executives, they really want humans in a loop uh, in all their customer interactions or as many as possible where, you know, a human can add value. And talk to us a little bit about how agents play a role uh, in a new world with LLMs. Yeah, I, I'll start off by saying 
I'm super excited about the potential of AI to be able to answer customer questions directly. Uh, but the reality is there will always need to be agents. I'm not one of those people who are like, oh, the contact center agent is a, a dinosaur, like it's a thing of the past. It's not a thing of the past. Um, but the routine questions that, oh, where's my order? Um, what's my account balance? Um, how do I make a return? How do I... Um, uh, cancel one item in an existing order, like all those types of things can be handled through automation because it doesn't require human uh, reasoning, cognition, judgment calls, et cetera. And in the future, the stuff that requires judgment calls needs to go to an agent. And so when a conversation goes to an agent, um, there's a bunch of ways that AI can help them as well. And so um, a couple of examples that we have in the, the quick product, one is, um, We've trained our own generative model on the agent side from prior agent conversations. So when an agent is typing a response to a customer, they can um, in real time get a suggestion that says in other situations with similar conversations, other agents have said this, do you wanna accept that and just uh, use that response? And if the agent doesn't happen, like, happen that, to um, like that particular response, they can actually start typing and the AI will follow along and when the AI understands where the agent is going with their thought, they can complete the thought. And so we call that um, uh, quick compose as the feature. And so that's super exciting because it really changes the game. It makes your um, agent pool kind of raises the bar up to the level of your best agents because you want to train right. for your right. best agents. So that's one example of, of generative AI. And that one is completely safe because it's trained only on company data. Um, we happen to be using large language, language models along the way to improve the language, the English, uh, or the whatever language the agent's in. Uh, but the actual kind of like the data and the suggestions are coming only from prior conversations. Um, there's a couple other cool things that um, AI makes possible. And some of them, it's crazy um, how quickly large language models may be um, kind of evening the playing field in the, the vendor space. Um, here's an example that we have a, a feature that we internally call magic message. Um, maybe we'll keep that name. I'm not sure. Stay tuned. And in a month from now, we might have to edit this video to change it. But it's basically an agent can type a couple bullet points about what they want a response to say. They don't have to worry about like punctuation, proper spelling and good grammar and, and a well-formed response. They can just say, here's what I want to say, AI rewrite it. And so if the customer says, I want to make a return and the customer purchased it 45 days ago, the agent can write 30 day warranty expired contact manufacturer send and the AI rewrites it into something like, I'm sorry to tell you that your warranty has expired more than 30 days ago. Um, go to this URL to contact the manufacturer. And Maybe. like that could just happen automatically. So that's another example. And then finally, um, there's just a bunch of stuff in terms of quality management and analytics, conversation analytics that can be done, like summaris, summarizing existing conversations into a couple sentences, being able to automatically determine the topic of a conversation, um, be able to say something like, in the last 24 hours, um, what was the leading uh, topic that customers have contacted me for? Oh, and there's no, no training or anything uh, learned from that. And it's, it's so... Um, so, I'm glad I, I we didn't develop our own technology to solve some of these problems a year or two ago. I mean, there's entire companies built around this that like the features that those companies are, um, their core value proposition is based on just became like table stakes and everybody's going to have that stuff in the future. And right. part of our value is that stuff is all incorporated in, in a really great digital messaging platform. Well, thanks, Mike. We'll see you in the next video. Awesome. Thanks, Christian.